Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Chris. Excited for the ACC tournament coming up, the 2020 ACC tournament. Be sure to hit the like button if you're excited about this. We had a really good regular season. I'm excited about our side of the bracket. I think it's going to be pretty easy to get to the championship game. So it's double elimination to start it, and then one game for the final. So we need to get this thing going. We need to get off to a good start in the first game. Really excited about that. We're going to go with Brian Van Bell on the mound. Hi again, everybody. Mike Patrick. And here it is, the ACC tournament. It looks great. We're going to play all of the games here. The stadium's looking fantastic. Brian Van Bell's looking for ACC Pitcher of the Year as well as National Player of the Year. I'm not a not National Pitcher of the Year. I'm not sure exactly when they're going to make those announcements for the awards, if it's going to come after the ACC tournament, if they're going to wait till the NCAA tournament comes out. But obviously we are having a really good season, and we need to get this thing going quick. That's a great start. There we go, Zamora. And as you guys know, Freddie Zamora's second round pick for the Milwaukee Brewers. He has signed his contract, so it's official he will not be back next year. Brian Van Bell is a guy that signed in as an undrafted free agent with the Boston Red Sox. So Miami has some guys that they're going to have to replace, and we're already starting to feel that. I, I've talked about this recently. Number 35 because as you get towards the end of the season, hit on the ground toward the oh, we got to turn. Oh my! God. Okay, don't be hurt. I always oh, okay. We got to see. It. I always get nervous. Collisions anywhere, especially at second base. Okay, so I think he's okay. He's fine. We're okay. And Freddie, still leading the race for National Player of the Year. I've talked about it. There's a second baseman at Hawaii that's winning one of the other national awards. So we've got to keep putting together strong performances for Freddie. Foul to the right side. But what I was saying is, I'm going to keep pumping in strikes here. Just missed with a fast that as you get towards the end, and I definitely want to have a strong finish. Obviously, I want to win the national title with this squad. But I'm, I'm really thinking about for next year, 2021 team. And maybe that's where a lot of you have already turned your focus to. Since the 2020 season was canceled, you're already looking at 2021. What kind of team is Miami going to have? And there's a number of guys coming back. Tony Jenkins, center fielder, he'll be back. So that's definitely good for Miami. And he's had a really good season for us here. But I'm a little unsure of what my team is going to look like next year. Because guy, all the juniors, almost all the juniors are having really good seasons. So I'm worried they're going to go to the draft. Okay, that's, that's not what we want to do here, guys. Swinging at bad pitches. So that's tough. He got me there. I really like this stadium. I think it, I think it looks great. This is a great setting for the ACC tournament. We need all of the guys hitting well down the stretch. I put in a lot of the reserves those last few games. Wanted them to get some playing time. Because again, thinking about next year. Drop in the comments. If you guys, some thoughts you have on the 2021 Hurricanes. Rounder to the third baseman. Throw to first. He's and, and maybe looking at some of the positions the where there'll be competition. Number I think there's no question the that. biggest one is what Miami will do at shortstop. Freddie had some injuries. Or he dealt with an injury this past season. Obviously he didn't play this year. The year before, dealt with injuries. Missed about 10 games. Ground ball of the second okay, what do we... I don't know what happened there. I thought I was, I thought I was right on it. Uh, okay. We need to avoid stuff like that. So we played Georgia Tech that second to last series. We swept them. Swung on and missed the breaking ball they're ranked... The I think you guys saw the national ranking. I think they're ranked 19th, so they dropped from... Fifth, they were 10, and they've kind of slid back. They don't have a great ACC record. And you see here, they're the number four seed on our side of the bracket. 
Only eight teams in this tournament. Four on each side, again, double elimination. That's and I don't, three. I'm not anticipating any troubles Number with our side of the bracket. The other side, they've got good teams. One on, one out. There's a grounder to the right side. It's a diving grab. Two out okay. here in the second inning. It's a good stop by Terrell. I would have loved to have turned double play there, but that's okay. There's a grounder to first. But Anthony Villar, second baseman, the he's the guy that Georgia stepped in for, for Freddie at shortstop. But he doesn't have that kind of range that Freddie had or what you would like for a typical shortstop. And what we've seen really at Miami the last several years, whether it's Brandon Lopez, same kind of thing, good range, good arm. You know, there's been other good shortstops. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's what we need. Got to get to two. If a ball hits the wall, you got to get to two. Okay. Okay, I know it's a little risky, but really, if it hits the fence, I gotta go too. I don't like staying at first. If you get thrown out, I guess you get thrown out, but I don't want to. Well, I take that back. I'm gonna stay aggressive in the postseason, guys. I don't. I don't want to change my philosophies too much. The the one thing maybe still in third, maybe cut that down a little bit. Okay, I feel like we got to go two on this one. Go, 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 go. He's got more speed. Yeah, I think he's fine. Okay, there we go. Nice hit. He's got more speed than Gil. That's Gabe Rivera. Good speed there. Okay, good. I wanted to see how it works. So he's 81 speed, so Gabe can steal more than what I've been doing. I've been stealing a little bit more with him. He's not one of those top guys. He's not Zamora, Jenkins, and Lala that were stealing well over 20 bases. Lala was getting thrown out quite a bit at the beginning of the year before I had my timing down. But Jenkins and Zamora are really good on the bases. So with Lala out, I've been stealing more with Rivera. And actually, okay, that that's difficult. I wish I could could have got that runner in from third. Okay. All right, that's okay. Scoreless through two. We're in the postseason. Guys, I, I just want to thank everybody for their support. It's been great. We're, we're doing this together. We're getting through the season. Straight away fly ball. Okay, this is not second, good. Throw to third. Okay. He's this doesn't happen very ball. often with Van Bell. Like he usually the, the as opponents have a low batting season. average against him this season. It's in the low low two twenties. But we got we're in a jam here. First and third. And nobody out. Just starting off with some off speed off speed pitches here. Again, Van Bell's got a fastball curve changeup. His changeup is really good. There's an article this season that came out about Van Bell saying he's got one of the best changeups in the country. Thought that was pretty interesting to get that kind of recognition. Got to get this strike out here. One gone. Okay, there we go. Got one out. We can turn two here and get out of this GM. Okay, we got a. Oh my goodness! And they score the first run of the game. I don't know what's going on at second base there. And the reason why he jumped is because it's the same. You're pressing the same direction to throw to second as you are to jump. So I thought I had it and was trying to throw it to second. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm not seeing it right or what's going on there at second base. We've got to get that figured out. We've got to avoid those things in the postseason. Everything matters here. Still have an opportunity to turn a double play. Okay, we'll take a strike out. Now we just need one out to get out of this mess. Okay. Delivers a strike with the change. 
And when there's runners on base, I, I kind of start, I like to start backwards a little bit with off speed if it's clicking rather than the fastball. Hit on the ground okay, we got to throw him out. Go, come on, Jenkins. He's rounding third. Come on, come on, come on. Got him. Yes, that's what we needed. That's what we needed. Okay, good. We got out of that jam. Only gave up a run. Tony Jenkins, nice throw from center field. Great tag by Del Castillo. Georgia Tech leaves a man on. Man, that was awesome. That was great. We needed that. We got to get the bats going here, though. The bats are coming. I know it's a double elimination tournament, but I don't want to start off with a loss. And we need Valdez to keep finishing strong. Again, I want to get him some fre freshman recognition on the all ACC freshman team. Okay. Did that eat? Oh my goodness. Okay. I thought maybe that could get to the warning track. Okay. JP Gates looking to stay strong. Had that home run in the last game. Okay. That's not it. Still keeping him in there in the lineup, even against the lefty. Number 51 is 0 for 1 today. Line drive okay, our right offense side. is not he clicking right now. Play. I am struggling now at the plate. Is a Rawlings gold glove play. And that's baseball in the sense that, After I mean, three, I was hammering this team late Number in the year. And really all three of those games, we played against them. But here we are. We're through three innings and down 1-0. Talking about shortstop, one of the guys that, that popped up to me, well, there's a that couple guys. Fouled. A couple freshmen to keep in mind. Uh, highly regarded freshmen locally in Miami. One of them is Braddock, Yohandi Morales. So a good height, long, uh, in that 6'3", 190 range. Um, he's a guy some people think will, will grow into a third baseman. He's talked about wanting to stay at shortstop as long as possible. He's a guy that's being groomed over there at Braddock by former her, for her, former Hurricane Harold Martinez. Hit to the first and I remember, two gone. you know, one of the things that's that's nice about this series, kind of just thinking about stories or baseball stories as we play, Hit to the left and it makes it helpful that if I can get through some innings in the of the fourth, here pitching the ball. But I remember going over to Braddock. You know, Harold was a guy in high school that was Number very highly regarded. A lot of recognition early on in his career Line drive, as a high school side. player. And I want to say it. One gone. maybe it was before his senior year, but I remember going over to Braddock High School and meeting Harold to do a photo shoot and an interview. We sat in the dugout, did an interview, took Get a bunch of photos. And it was really cool. It, it was. Just, I remember it was kind of rainy that day, um, or a little cloudy, that kind of thing. And I've done the I've done things like this over the years. Whether it's meeting up for photo shoots with players, I, w I used to do. I haven't been able to do these lately. There's just so much. So much that that's. Uh, it's hard to do really long projects right now. Um, not just Number during this time, just in, in general with how things are. But anyways, doing the long, the mini documentaries, the hour long, two hours type movies I'd put together, little internet movies and things like that, where I'd, I'd follow a recruiter around. I, I think the biggest one that you guys remember, if you guys have been following the site for a long time, was the one with Brandon Harris when I rode up with the Booker T team to South Carolina for a game. And that's a fun story to tell, just because we had just started inside the U. I had hit up Booker T, Coach Ice Harris, and uh, been to the practices and things like that, but asked if I could go up there with a camera. I had just bought the camera maybe a week or two before, so it was really my first time handling a camera. I ride on the team bus. I, f I did everything with the team. Team dinners. I remember walking through Charleston. Right um, the walk again, the walkthroughs, the practices leading up to the big game Number against Somerville and AJ Green. In. If you guys remember that, that was a lot of fun. But what I want, okay, going back and, and done other other ones like it. And 
another one um, whether it was Jeremy Davis if you guys remember him I we drove around in the car and went around his neighborhood there in Fort Myers pointing out different things and the park he grew up in houses he hung out at things like that another one was in Loganville Georgia with Storm Johnson I remember that was a big one I drove up to Georgia and hung out with Storm for the day, they had a big, a big game, and I did like a video from start to finish. Include I was with in film sessions. We met at like six in the morning at the park at the the stadium, the day of the game, to shoot our first shot of the day. Hop to fence, and it, it's what I want to say is same way with Harold is just doing these things. Always very appreciative. Okay, there's a base hit. Always very appreciative of the players and the coaches that help make it happen and a lot of these things especially the video stuff it's them essentially putting a blind trust in me in a way of in my head you know you can say oh it's going to be cool I, I have a vision and I think it's going to be great I think people are going to really like it but it's really up to the player if they're not only are they willing to give me that access but also like trust that okay yeah I think this will be good and and those kind of things and, and I've always been very appreciative and a run will come in to score. of people this is what you, do with the state pitches right here. you know al allowing me to do these things so I just yeah I want to get right back to it but we tied the game out one here I, I want to make sure we're talking about the game too okay Freddie okay this one's hammered second. we're still going home get down oh no how did that happen we've been doing well with that play all season long and it just doesn't work there. You know, I, I thought I got a decent jump. Gates doesn't have good speed coming down the line. But I thought I had good speed. I'm trying to take this lead. We're 1-1 through 5. I'm settling him to Finn Bell. But anything can happen here. And he can obviously get tired. We need to get more runs, though. So what I want to say is Harold Martinez was one of those guys that we kind of did this photo shoot, didn't know what to expect, and, and it turned out really well. I was very happy with it. And anyway, so coming full circle, he had a minor league career, was drafted, Got minor league career, had a good one. career at Miami, uh, didn't make it to the majors, but again, still had a good career, and he's giving back now to Braddock, Takes essentially a to a guy a that is starting to profile like him in the sense that we're coming up through Braddock. Braddock's not necessarily known... Um, for always producing players and really not a lot of the public schools in Miami I'm generalizing I understand but just the the general sense of how things work is top baseball prospects end up coming up through or at least finishing out through the private school programs it, it's kind of just the nature of how things typically work Again, speaking of generalities, obviously there are exceptions. But you get a guy like Yohandi Morales that comes up through Braddock, getting good instruction from Harold, helping him out. And he's a guy that potentially could be Miami's starting shortstop in 2021. Another guy, American Heritage, Gio Ferraro. Same kind of thing in, in, in terms of Take another look at that a taller player. Blood. Again, he could grow into more of a third baseman type. Georgia Tech leaves a man on second. We'll be going to the bottom. But a talented prospect that's been known for a while. Played to Arch, Archbishop McCarthy as a young player over at American Heritage to finish dive. up his high school career. The there we go. That's a good first. base hit. Del Castillo beats out a, a play there. That's good to see. And Ferraro is actually going to room with Nate Thomas. Pitch out of St. Thomas Aquinas. I had an article about Nate right Thomas the on the website InsideTheU.com. One of the very productive Number pitchers locally that they're bringing in. Out. Jamar Fairweather's another one. So these guys that have won a bunch of games, started a bunch of big games, just adding to the pitching staff. Obviously, you get the top guys in Alejandro Rosario and Victor Medeiros. 
but guys like Nate Thomas are going to be big in terms of getting in the program, continuing to develop, winning attitude. One of those guys that always talks about growing up a Miami fan. Okay, we need Villar. We need Villar here to get a base hit. Westminster Christian. Always like seeing their high school program play or practice. They've always been great with the access. Okay, here we go. Let's get a base hit. There we go. We got to get get there, get there, get there. Okay, there we go. Anthony Villar, that's what we needed. 2-1 lead. Hit and run. There we go. Base hit. Okay, there we go. Get to third. Okay, it worked out. I didn't know why he stopped there. but Okay, there we go. Up 3-1. to one. This is great. And I want to keep talking about... I, I try to, to present some stories to you guys while we're watching this. Ground ball to the left side. The throw across the infield. Every throw, I, I mean, especially in the postseason, every throw I want to just sail over the heads. You guys have been watching this series. You've seen that a lot by some opponents this year. It's kind of funny to see, but I'm hoping for those in these big games here. Yeah, Van Bell's really settling in here. My plan is, you know, during the regular season, even when the starting pitchers were having good games, I'd kind of try to keep them like six, seven innings just to get some bullpen work in. But the way I'm looking at the postseason is I'm planning on, I'll go with Van Bell as long as I can. One thing I don't know is how the schedule is going to work out in terms of the days. They only show you your schedule one day at a time. So I don't know exactly when Van Bell can pitch again if we keep winning just based on fatigue and things like that. And I absolutely, just a, a pet peeve of mine, and this game actually lets you... The, the stamina kind of replenishes pretty quickly. But I don't take advantage of that for the most part. Obviously, if you guys saw that last series, you guys saw that I got Alex McFarlane in there for that save after he started the last game. I don't like doing that stuff. The stamina was fine and that kind of thing. It was down a little. Yeah, th this game just doesn't knock things down as much as it should. But again, I don't take advantage of it. I always like to give guys proper rest, keep things as realistic as possible. That McFarland thing was an exception. But in general, like I, I, that's one thing. Like I love college baseball in the postseason, following pitching things. And if you guys see on the website, every year I always try to – I put together a graph of how many pitches a pitcher threw, how many innings – in the sense of trying to determine their availability for the rest of the weekend because I find it very interesting with strategizing the pitching staffs in the postseason. With that being said, that's how I want to go about this postseason starting with the ACC tournament. Regardless if the game lets me put a guy in or not, a guy like even like a guy like Van Bell, I don't want to get ridiculous with it and play him on two days rest or start him the next, anything like that. So... I'll keep it as realistic as possible. And again, I don't know what the schedule is. I know we play this game. But I, I assume if we do win or win or lose, I assume we'll play the next day, but maybe we have to wait a day and play another one. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. But yeah, either way, double elimination. We're playing another second game for sure. Okay, let's let's go ahead and get these guys out. We are on top of the eighth. I'm kind of moving right along. This game's gone pretty fast. That retires the side, and they go one, two, three. I'd like the bats to pick up a little bit. Number thirty is the number four. So I mentioned three shortstops. With nine home runs and forty-one RBIs. To kind of keep an eye on for 2021. I think those are the main three. Miami is bringing in other players that played shortstop during their high school careers. But I think those are the top three, you know, with Anthony Villar returning. I think they would do that more than a guy like that you saw. You know, I put Tuero, Luis Torero over there towards the end, you know, starting for Zamora. But 
I think that they would most likely go with Villar if they're going to keep on their returners. I think they'd move Villar to short. And Tuero would play second in that situation. A little bit stronger for an arm. Has experience doing it. A little bit bigger of a player, that kind of thing. So I think that that's what they would do. But again, I they've started freshmen. It's not like they... They, I mean, they just did it with Freddie. Freddie was starting shortstop as a freshman when he got to Miami. So it's not like that they're that they wouldn't make that decision. They're going to go with the best players. They've the typically always done that. They did it with Jim Morris. There's no reason to think with Gino Demari as head coach, they won't do any different there. Okay, we're in the top of the ninth. Again, moving this game right along. I'm excited about with where we're at. I can't worry that we only got three runs. Because right now we have a two-run lead. That's all that matters. Okay, we got to get out there. Come on, come on. Oh, okay. Dang. I thought about taking Rivera out on a defensive sub, but... But I left him in there. I think that it's okay. We'll, we'll be fine there. And Van Bell's doing okay. I, I'm definitely thinking about Fetterman, though. Okay, we got to get out there. Gil, get out there. Nice. There we go. Number one is 0 for 3 today. One on, one out. He hits a liner back up the middle. Okay. He fields and fires. Now the we're third. in a little bit of a jam. That's and a at the wrong single. time. Number 13 is up next. Coach is on his way to the mound, and this will be a long visit. You want to make sure and give that bullpen plenty of time to warm up. I want to see if I can get him out. This guy's not a good hitter. Okay, there we go. We got to turn turn two. Got him. There we go. That's how you end the game on a double play. Van Bell was not going to go past that batter. We got the win, three to one. That's how we start off the ACC tournament. That's exciting news. I'll figure out the bats in a second. I'm not going to worry about that and see what I did wrong. 11 hits, solid. They had a good pitcher, left hand a pitcher. What determines who ends up winning the ball so it's a little bit difficult, but we got that win. That was a good win. We'll take it for sure, and we'll keep this thing moving. Going into staying in the winner's bracket for the ACC tournament. So here we go, guys. We're, we're facing Maryland. Again, we just faced them, and we lost to them. So I want to pound these guys. But obviously, I know it's a challenge as well. It's a little bit of mix. So we're in the winner's bracket of the ACC tournament. Excited about that. We won 3-1 to one in the first game. A little disappointed that we couldn't score more runs. But we've got Chris McMahon on the mound. 9-1, 304 ERA. Colorado Rockies draft pick. And he went ahead and signed, so it's official. He's moving on. As expected. So, here we go. Again, Maryland doesn't have the best ratings. I was disappointed that I lost. Losses do happen, even though we've had a really good year. And they've got a really good pitcher on the mound, which I'm expecting quite a bit in the ACC tournament. Only change I made in the starting lineup, it's a right-handed pitcher, so I'm going with Toro in right field. Left-handed hitter, whereas Valdez, who's had a really good year, and I could certainly play him against righties, but he's a right-handed batter. I decided just to make that move, and I'll go with Valdez most of the time in the postseason, just because he's been pounding the ball so much. I mean, it's it's crazy the numbers he's been putting up. The home run total, and it's crazy watching it because not only 
was he not expected to have a role this year for the Hurricanes in his freshman season. And he wasn't getting very many at-bats at all. And I just kind of essentially put him in there a little bit. And he started doing really well. But what's crazy to me is I'm able to hit home runs with him somehow, even though his power number, his power ratings are really not very high. They're like in the 60s. And maybe I'm just getting, okay, this is not a good start for us here. But maybe he's just getting like really good pitches to hit because he doesn't have high ratings. I don't know. Regardless, he's stepping it up. That's the third out. Okay, gave up a couple of base runners there in the first inning, but we're out of it. I'm curious about Maryland. There's, I know he's good. Yeah, three and five record, but the 109 strikeouts, I think that, that might lead the ACC. Anytime a pitcher goes over 100 innings, that's really impressive, especially in this season here. Okay, there we go, Tony Jenkins. That's how we start it off. Okay, that's exactly what we needed. He almost caught that, but we got to try to steal second. I'm going to try to steal third. I want to put the pressure on early on in this game. It's good to get a base hit considering we only had three runs last game. Okay, I, I wanted to steal, but man, that was right down the middle. This one's fouled back. Okay, this is going to be difficult to steal third here with two strikes. Runner goes. Throw to third. There we go. That worked out. It could have been a hit and run situation if I had to swing. Line drive to the right side. Number four. We'll keep him at third. And I like that. I'm trying to steal second, and they, they typically can never throw me out a second if they throw to third first. Okay, I'm a little too anxious here. Okay, Del Castillo, runners on second and third. Oh, uh, not, a, not a great swing there. Fouled out of play. 0-2. Got a piece to stay alive. Just missing just a little bit. That's exactly what... Get down. That's good. That's exactly what we needed. There we go. Two-run double for Del Castillo. And two runs come in. Breaking ball for a strike on the outside edge. We have that 2-0 lead. This is great. This is great. We've got it. Let's just keep it going, guys. Come on, Terrell. Hit toward third. Throw to first. That's okay. That's okay. We got an out, but we advanced around the third. We still have it's only one out now. We've got some a couple opportunities to get him in. We've got to take this early lead and extend it. That's not a good swing. I'm on it, but there's no way we can hit those pitches when they're way out of the zone. Okay, that might drop, guys. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's going to drop. That's exactly what we needed. Okay, there we go. Let's just keep it going. Keep the line moving, guys. I don't want... Or Gil doesn't have great speed. This is low with a breaking ball. I've gotten a couple stolen bases with them this year. Breaking pitch hit toward third. Anthony Villar, and again, that's Eight exactly what we second. need from him. He's coming up huge. Throw to third. That's a one out Had the big second. hit in the first game. And that's a nice hit right there, too. Okay, let's keep this thing going. Uh-oh. Pickoff throw was so close. Just got back ahead of it. Oh, throw that again. I've, I got to line that up better. I want him to throw that pitch again. Leave. Yeah, they're not going to mess around. Okay, Rivera, got to get a... Oh, there we go. Go, 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 go. Okay, there. Yes, it's going to drop. That's a nice double. There we go. I was late on that, that pitch right before that, but I was able to line that one up really good. 
All right, Gates. Oh, nice. It dropped. I thought he was going to catch it. Oh, my goodness. This is great. Oh, and he's, and he's shook. I like it. 6-0. Everybody hits. Let's go. Still just one out. This is the number nine hitter in the lineup. Everybody hits this first one inning. On, one out. Keep the line There's moving. To the left side the hole. That's in time okay. For the out. okay, good. Beat it out. There we go. We're batted around. The and they took out their starting pitcher. The junior is going to come in as a reliever. It's a good move by the manager here to get somebody else in there. Obviously, we should roll in this game. The runner goes. They're already going to the bullpen. We have this big lead. And if we go ahead and win this, we'll move into the, the winner's bracket. We'll stay in the winner's bracket. We'll, we'll face somebody come up to the loser side. One and one. Back up the middle on the ground. There we go. Go, 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 go. And they'll wave him around third. Nice. And with that knock, he keeps the Tony Jenkins Miami. coming up for the squad. Seven to zero. Let's keep this thing going. Runner at first takes off. The junior steals himself another. Oh, that's tough. Right what a side. one. That was like our best first inning of the whole season. We have not scored. I, I can't even think of a time we scored seven runs in the first inning, no matter who we played against. So this is great. So I'm obviously, I need to pitch, pitch and stay locked in on pitching. But really, the way I'm looking at guys, we need to play six and a half innings. We need to get that 10 run advantage to get that run rule through seven and since we're the home team we don't need to hit in the bottom of the seventh so let's make this a really short game that's the way i'm looking at it i know i'm getting ahead of myself but really that's the way i want to look at it we want to get the, the team off their feet that was a silly play we want them to rest for the next game to you have to field, you have to go there. You have to think about that. that. And the reality is, I'm, again, three. it's the same mentality I have with the first in game. The My plan is, with man, I'd like for him to pitch the whole game, especially number if we're only going to play seven innings. In. I just want to keep the That's bullpen fresh. Ball. There we go. The More hits, which is great. Yeah, obviously, you guys drop in the comments on any topic you guys want to talk about with the team, whether it's this one, the 2020 season, how things are going here. You guys have been great dropping in comments about who you'd like to see more of, whether it's a hitter or a pitcher. Hit on the ground toward the hole. The junior is aboard with a single. That. Number 16 is up next. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Fastball inside. A ball and no strikes. And we're in a good spot here, obviously, to tack on more runs. Breaking ball in tight for a ball. Breaking ball inside. We could definitely tack on more runs here. That'd be great. 3-0 lead. I'm swinging though. Yeah, I. I, Foul ball to the right I know side. it didn't work out, but I'm still swinging. Oh, that has to get through. Steps on the bag for one. Double Man, block. that's great. difficult. That's All right, Valar. He's been hitting the ball really well lately. Great to see. It's great to see because he's not one of our power guys, so if he can become a really good average guy. There we go. Slap and base hits. Like stuff like that. That's what we need in the postseason. And a run will come in to score. He's on with a single. And le left handed bat definitely helps out as well. Hit to short. The throw to second. So there we go. We get a run. It wasn't seven like we got in the first inning. But we're moving closer to that 10 run advantage. Strike 
straightaway fly ball. The fielder is able to come in under it. One gone. Number four is 0 for 1 today. There's a line drive into left. He's out of there. Number 42 is 0 for 1 today. High fly ball to straightaway left. Field. There we go. There, that's what we needed. That's what we it. needed. The side is retired. In Number 10 is up next, hitting 256 with two long balls and nine RBIs. The throw across to first. I just kind of, I want to look, talk more about the shortstop thing for Miami in 2021. Those were the, I mentioned the three guys, the three possibilities the catch. that they could go with. They also signed, you know, they could go with Dominic Patelli, a guy they signed out of Doral. Yeah, I don't think he's the level of the other two that I mentioned, the other two recruits. And then Jose Azara from Miami Christian could also be an option as well. I think it's just going to be fun to see how the competition goes and what they decide to do. If Morales, Morales is a guy that if he, he kind of st strikes me as a guy this one has hit hard that could be that guy and again if his side if his range is still there as he continues to mature to play that shortstop position and really everything else is pretty much set um lala jenkins rivera in the outfield if one of them falters Maybe you look at a guy like Jared Thomas to play more, that kind of thing. But I think it's it's pretty much going to be those three unless something happens. Shortstop is open. Second base would be Villar. First base, Terrell. Third base, Gill. Catcher, Del Castillo. So you're only replacing shortstop. And Freddie Zamora is obviously someone that's, that's very good. But with all those other pieces, you feel good about being able to just replace that one hitter. A key hitter, obviously, but they played without him this year. They've played without him quite a bit over the last two seasons. So they've gotten used to it, is my, uh, my point there. And then at DH, you, you can always rotate in multiple guys at DH. JP Gates is a guy, but JP could also be looking to transition more to a full-time pitcher role. And it would give another opportunity to another player, Jared Thomas, a bat that they like that's on the team now. They could go with any other freshman hitters as well. So they'll have options. The biggest thing for 2021 is what they'll do in the starting rotation. I mentioned Chris McMahon, Brian Bobo, Slade Sacconi. All three of the guys will be need to be replaced. You got Jake Smith, a Juco guy I'm excited about. I think he's a guy that could step right in and be a high-profile guy for the Hurricanes in his first season. And then Alex McFarlane. And then you've got a whole slew of guys looking to to compete for that. I think that's what it'll be. I think it'll be those two guys, and then the rest of them will be competing for that 3-4 spot in the rotation. You've got a guy like Jake Garland. Returning, he's a guy that would have stepped into that number five role this year if they needed a fifth starter. And they were getting ready to until the season was canceled. But we just didn't get a look at him. But they really like his bulldog mentality. He strikes people out. You know, former state champion in high school, so he's played in big games. I mentioned Gates in previous one. Previous episode, he's the guy as well. Okay, JP, let's go. Hit to the left side. The throw across the infield. The easy flip to first for the out. Okay, we we're th we're in the fifth next. here, and it's still only 8-0. A ground ball headed for the hole. It's a okay. Grab. This inning. It's crazy. Like. It's part of how it goes, but we scored with scoring seven in the first inning. Obviously, you can't do that every inning, but we've only scored one run since. With a fastball there. And now we only have one more crack at accomplishing this six and a half inning game that I'm going for. And I know it's 
Not a huge deal. But I'm putting the pressure on myself to wrap this up. And it's a different kind of pressure because it's not, it doesn't mean a to much because getting the win is the most important thing. Our, bill, our bullpen is fresh. So that's not an issue either. It's just more of an internal thing. I want to stay positive in the postseason with a lot of positive plays and be a little disappointed if I have to go all nine innings after scoring seven runs in the first inning. You're thinking even like a 15-0 game or something, 15, something with that kind of a start. But here we go. There we go, Tony Jenkins. This is what we need here. This is I, I got to score two runs this inning. I have to look at it like the junior steals I'm down three to one in the ninth, bottom of the ninth. That's how I have to feel about this situation. I got to come up clutch. Everybody needs clutch hits. We got to get Tony Jenkins. We have to get him in from home. Okay, okay, Zamora. All you need is a sacrifice fly. I will take one right now. Grounded to the first baseman. He's out of there. Up by the first there we go. A little late on the reaction, but I was able to get him home. Okay, that's good. That's what I wanted to do. It wasn't the reaction like Eric Hosmer had in the World Series, but I wanted to go home from the start. So we only need one run. Again, that's assuming we, we shut him out in the seventh. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Go, go, go. Oh, that's okay. That's a double, but that's... Oh, man, I wanted a home run right there. This field looks huge. I'm a big fan of this this ballpark. And the ballparks are going to be great. In the postseason, we're definitely going to host the regional. I don't know if they have Super Re... I don't know how it's going to work out with the tournament, obviously. Obviously, you go double elimination in the regionals, the best two out of three in the super regionals, and then in the College World Series with eight teams qualifying. I don't know exactly how the game's going to work out, if they're going to go with that format or what. That ball's lined hard, but foul outside first. Ground ball to first. The okay, little disappointed, not going to lie. Would have liked to have got that 10-run lead. Number 32 we got one run. In. That just means we're going to – this guy, I cannot believe how his hot zones are crazy. It's, a shallow right. it's like, where do you pitch him? I, I just want to keep it down. But, man, he's, he's, he's got red all over Number three when he comes up to bat. For two with the plate today. Come on. Up the middle. Turn it. That's in time for the out. They get there two. we go. The sophomore comes to the plate. It's a shallow left. All right, Freddie, there we go, there we go. All right, we need to run. Let's keep this thing moving. Let's put this team away. Let's get out of this game. Move on to the next. Oh, that's not a way to start it. Not a good start there. Number 43 is digging in. Breaking pitch hit outside of first. That's oh, there we go. Nice. A walk-off game-ending home run for game Gabe Rivera. We hit that one foul, and we bounce back. Just like we did early in the game. That's great to see for R Rivera getting the ball out of the ballpark. It kind of goes hot and cold for me this season. That's a great way to end it. That's what we needed. That's good. A 10-0 win. We'll take it. We'll move on. We're keeping this thing moving, the ACC tournament. I'm glad you guys are here. Shout out to you guys for showing all your support. We're coming right back. The ACC tournament action. Gabe Rivera pounding the ball. That's great to see. It's exactly what we needed. The squad is excited. It looks like a walk-off. But we'll celebrate every win. That's definitely what we got to do here. The offense was impressive in the end. It was really a one-sided ball game. Guys, we are back for the ACC tournament. We're playing Maryland again. We beat them 10-0. I expect the same thing. Let's pound this team. Move on. If we win this game, we move in to the ACC championship game. 
So instead of going with Slade Sacconi this game, I'm going with Alex McFarlane. I want to save Sacconi for the for the championship game. Instead of going McFarlane for the championship game. So just mixing it up. Want to get Alex in there. He pitched well last time. We're giving him more starts. So this will be his third start in the last three weeks. So that's great. We're getting him some more work. He's getting some freshman all-conference recognition. Maybe it would be ACC freshman of the year. Just depends how he finishes up here. And maybe some freshman All-American status. Okay, that's not the play I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to throw it to third. The reason why that happens is because I'm rolling to my the, the defender's right. Hitting left on the screen, on the joystick and left is also throw the ball to third. So it's essentially it, that that's why that happens sometimes. It's an ugly start. It's not what we want for Alex McFarlane. Okay, this is not a good start. This, I've talked about this before too, and McFarlane's still a good pitcher, but it's so much different when it's not the top three starting pitchers with Van Bell, Sacconi, and McMahon. I just notice it being a little bit different. And this guy is, he get a home run? Man, that guy's, how are we supposed to pitch that guy? And I don't want to throw, throw him, I don't want to walk him, but man, he's got red zones everywhere. I guess if we take it, we'll take a sacrifice fly given the situation, given that that guy's incredible. So we're down 1-0. It's crazy how things change so much in a game because we just pounded this team 10-0. They get the win in the loser's bracket to advance. Maryland's got to beat us twice to move on to the championship game. We've already lost to them once this year. But instead of looking at it like they can beat us again, I'm looking at like, okay, that is all they're going to get from us. I'm not overly concerned with this team because they don't have like high rated players for the most part. We should be able to handle their pitcher. Walks are a little high. His hit and walks. His whip's not. I looked at 91. Hits and walks, 60 innings. Not exactly what you want to see. There we go, Tony Jenkins. This guy just gets hits. I love him in the leadoff spot. The terrible. We're going with Zamora in the two spot still. It's just a little bit more power there, a little bit more pop. And it's really an opportunity because Jenkins has been playing so well. I can get Jenkins over to second or third. And then a chance for Freddie to drive him in. And really, if it's not Zamora in the two spot, I'm not sure who exactly I would go with. Valar would be an option. He's rounding third. Here's the throw. And a run will come in to score. A run scores on the single. It's just something to think about. So there we go. Tied that ball game up. Oh my goodness. That has not happened much this year at all. But Freddie got picked off first. They know I'm stealing. Just missed with a fastball. Nobody on base and one gone. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball at the letters. One and one. A long drive. There we go. There's no doubt about yes, that. that's what we needed a home run. That's huge. Adrian Del Castillo, we need him really clicking. His numbers have come down a little bit, but now he's kind of like late in the season. But then these last few games, he's hitting the ball well, driving the ball well, hitting home runs, doubles, having some big hits. It's exactly what we needed from him. And I think the thing about with when we talked about Miami's 2021 season, he's definitely the catalyst and a reason to be really excited because obviously you lose a, a very good player in Zamora who didn't play this year anyways. But Del Castillo's production, it gives your, your lineup a whole look of being, of one that could be very productive. And what we saw, so back that up from 2019, they had good offensive numbers, but you're expecting 
a better offensive season for the team because everyone is essentially a year older, more experienced. And I think that goes even in line with Del Castillo. So look for a good lineup for the Hurricanes next year. And a really good team. And, and just because you guys don't know the, the names yet, and we haven't seen them produce in a Miami uniform, a guy like Jake Smith, for example. Okay, we got to get quit. We got to quit getting picked off at first. I don't know where this is coming from. We haven't seen that much this year. Takes a called strike on a fastball. But yeah, I definitely think that they're going to have a good lineup next year. That one's foul tipped. I think the bullpen will be fine. I think the big thing will just be the starting pitching. And, you know, one thing with the baseball program that's they've done a really good job with over the years, and obviously they missed the tournament those couple of years recently. More of an outlier situation, but really. For the most part, the guys that get that first. opportunity to step in on a, a lead role, they tend to do very well, even if they hadn't done it the year before. They do a really good job of de player development. The biggest thing that I, that stands out to me with player development is that year one to year two guy that gets playing time as a freshman. They leave them in there. And some of these guys have really low batting averages, but then they just pick it up in year two. I think that they have so many cases like that. And it's been a few years. Maybe some of the guys, you know, Ryan Jackson's a guy that stands out to me if you check his stats. You know, one of those type of guys that just continued to work, continued to develop. Garrett Kennedy was a guy like that. You know, just guys that, that get opportunities. So my point is, you know, sometimes with what you'll see in the fir their first year, they can really get a lot better in that second year. And so a guy like Del Castillo, who's really good as a freshman, you don't know what kind of year he was going to have this past year, but he could be even, maybe he's going to be even better, increase his abilities. That's what definitely what you're thinking. Players do get better. Number 10 is the number nine batter hitting 250 with two home runs and nine RBIs. He's out of there. Miami leaves a man on first. One away. Number five is digging in. Fastball just missed. Okay, there we go. Okay, that is not that's that same silly play. Okay. We we've had some struggles there at second base in the ACC tournament between the, the beginning when we were couldn't line up the ground ball and now we keep throwing it to third. Number forty two is digging in. A little frustrating because it's not really been an issue and there are things that Breaking ball it ultimately right feels like falls on me, but man, I'm trying to explain what's going on with these situations. Foul tipped. That's the third out. Maryland leaves a man on first. Number 51 is one for one today with a single. Swing little a little late on that one. Down. So yeah, we're we're it's this game is definitely a different game than the, the game we just played against Maryland. Hit to the left side where we won 10 0, seven runs in that first field. inning. That's in time for the And now we've got a two one game. And it's not a doubleheader, it's just consecutive games. But it reminds me of a doubleheader that, that I love to bring bring up because it's such a crazy thing if you think about it when it comes to momentum and how do things change so quickly in a double header but you guys know some of you guys know I'm a big Royals fan that's that's my squad that's what I grew up on that's I, I still love watching the Royals but it, it, the double header talk always reminds me of this crazy Royals double header in 2004 they won 26 to 5 in game one and they lost 8-0 in game two. Like, how does that happen? It is crazy to be that you scored that many runs. 
you literally, when you talk about like emptying the tank, they literally did that in the first game. Like all the runs, all the hits, and then just nothing in game two. It's crazy that that happens. And that's baseball. There's so many like interesting, odd things that happen with the game. That one I always bring up. It's always something that reminds me of it again when doubleheaders come up and. And okay, I don't know why that dropped. It looked like a catch. Oh, we should have thrown it home. Okay, our defense has been a little shaky this game, and now we're in a 2-2 game in the fourth here. We need to tighten up on defense, especially in the postseason. Although, I will say, though, it's been much better than some of the stuff that was happening at the beginning of the year. Grounder to third. They get one. And that's a perfect example. We get a double play there. So before, we were really struggling with timing up the throws. So throws were going all over the place. It's a shallow left. That one had eyes. And a run will come in to score. Okay, little disappointing. We're down three to two. Swung on and missed the break. I want to stick with McFarland. This isn't what I had in mind, though. I really don't want to face these guys again. I'm not thinking about losing, but this one may stay in I don't like that they got the lead here. And makes the catch in foul ground. Maryland leaves a man on. Toward left, the third base. We need everybody to start getting some hits here. You know, Terrell and Gill. I want to talk about them for a little bit here. Hit out to left. He should be able to and you saw signs of it, with, particularly with Terrell, but their strikeout rates were way too high in 2019. The strikeout percents were way too high. Close to 30% of their plate appearances were strikeouts. I'd like to see that number down, even though they do produce home runs. And you saw signs of that with Terrell being much better with his strikeout number. So you want to see those numbers come down as they continue to work. And... It's what I talked about earlier about progression as a player. Those are numbers I think can improve as you gain more experience. I think that they would, especially with Terrell. I think he's definitely has a good trajectory. Okay, there we go. We were able to get that play down from McFarlane on that on that bunt right there. One on one out. They're still trying to bunt. He drops down the bunt. But I'm glad that worked out with McFarlane. I, I didn't want to miss that. There. It's a shallow left. Man. I'm a little unsure what to do here because they're starting to get too many hits. We're in the fifth inning. This guy is incredible. This hot zone. The pitches are a little bit off. I'd like to get McFarland through five, though. Get him in line for the win. If we can come back, and they're just teeing off on him, though. The runner will try to score. And it will Jenkins throw a little bit off. We threw out a guy earlier in the tournament. That didn't happen there. Down four to two. This one is crushing. Maryland baseball in the ACC. Obviously, they've made that change to the to the Big Ten, but we're facing them here in the ACC tournament. We're struggling with them. Quickly in a hole, zero and two. Down four to two. And I'm not going to press at the plate, but I'm more concerned about the pitching. We've got to keep their runs two. down. Did he check his swing? Some guys in the bullpen to go to are Palmquist, left-hander Carson Palmquist, could, could go righty. Tyler Kaiser. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't want to go with Sacconi because, again, I'm saving him to start the next game. It's not that kind of an urgency situation. Okay, there we go. But those are the two guys I'm looking at. I could go Jake Garland, but his ERA is kind of too high for me. So that's why I'm thinking more Kaiser than than Garland just because of the way the season's played out. That's kind of how I'm looking at the depth chart there. Albert Mori is another guy, a right-handed pitcher out of the bullpen, but again, another guy with a high ERA. 
Spencer Bodanza is a left-handed pitcher. Left-handed specialist. I don't want to pitch him too much against righties. And then Daniel Fetterman. Ground ball to the left side. Over to I definitely first. can go multiple innings with Fetterman. But we get through five here, so down four to two. They got ten hits, way too many, but... Okay. I don't want to go Fetterman for the final four innings of this game. There we go, Valdez. Okay, there we go. Got to get... I wanted to get to second, but man, well, I saw them. I saw him turn. I was like, I can't, I can't get to second on this one. So we'll we'll be safe here. All right, Valar, keep piling up hits. Let's go. There we go. Another base hit. We'll take singles. Number twenty-seven is on with a base hit. Number ten is digging in. This is a spot I've been waiting for for J.P. Gates. He's been picking it up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Base hit. We'll take it. Got to get home, though. Get down. Okay, we're in there. There we go. 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 Okay, only four to three now. We can do this. Okay, that's not what I had in mind. Smart play by Maryland to go first to third on the fielder's choice. On the ground to right, throw to third. It's like instant replay. What are we doing? Okay, we got guys with some speed. You see their cleats and the icons there. Okay, go to third. We move the guys up for them throwing it in the center field. So now it's all set up for Adrian here. A base hit will score two runs for sure. With two outs, they're going to be on the move with good speed. But we got to get the ball in. Uh, got to get the ball to the outfield. Got to drive the ball. Find a gap. We got to do something here. Oh, that's tough. That's such a solid hit. This is why you don't leave the ball. How did he get over there? Man, four to three. I would have loved to have taken the lead right there. Got to be smart with the bullpen. Got to go with Palmquist and Kaiser. Get them ready. We'll see how it goes. We're just going to play this out, this inning, and, and Rounder to the right see... How the lineup looks, whether it's lefty, righty, that kind of thing. Okay, man. They're just there's racking up too many hits off McFarlane. Number 14 is up next. Coach is on his way out to the mat. He needs to set. Okay, Palmquist is ready. Looks like that full bar, red, right there. They have all righties coming up. I just don't like that that they've gotten so many hits. I think I'm just going to make this move. I know it's not lefty-righty matchup, guys. It's not what I'd want. The but if Palmquist is going to be a starting pitcher net for us next year, and really, he's got to be able to get righties out. And, and again, I know that this is an ideal, but you saw how it's set up with our lineup. And I don't like that McFarland's like giving up so many hits and his stamina's going down. Kaiser's ready now. If I want to make the, if it starts to. Okay, there we go. I want to make this simple play. Maybe I could have thrown him out at second. Okay, this obviously is not working out. We get the, we give up a double here. That's tough. Number five is the number nine batter hitting two That's tough with those righties no against Palmquist. And, and I'm, the way I'm thinking about it now is I don't want to waste Kaiser. Or I don't want to waste Palmquist. If I could somehow get him out of this inning. 
Or get him up to the lefties at least. Again, not ideal. I understand that. And maybe I should have warmed guys up sooner. I had Kaiser ready to go. But now we only need one more out. But man, he's got red all over. A lot of red zones here. Let's see if we can find a pocket. Get that slider in there. And a backdoor breaking ball for a strike. We got two outs. We only need to get one more out. We're in the sixth here. Down five to three. We cannot allow any more runs. Oh my goodness. Base hit. Okay, can he throw him out? Oh my goodness, that's huge. Tony Jenkins throwing guys out at home. That's incredible. That's oh my goodness, that's huge. In the middle of the sixth, we got out of that mess. It's still down five to three. We've got to get some base hits here now. All right, Terrell, that's a way to start us off. Got to get to second. Man, that was close. They cut it off right before it got to the wall. Oh, my goodness. Alex Terrell injured with a pulled hamstring. This is an absolute crushing blow. I'm worried about pulled hamstring. I don't know how long he's going to be out. That's not a good injury, though. Oh, this one's tough. This one hurts quite a bit. The Lala thing, we've been able to get over and get through it. We're still hitting the ball well, and a guy like Valdez fills in. I guess I'm going to go I'm gonna go Tuero here and move guys around. I'll go Gilda first. I'll go Tuero to right field. I'll put Valdez at third base. That's, that's what I'm thinking here. Um... I could go, a and we'll figure out moving forward, but just for this corner. game, that's, man, that is a tough loss for us. That is so tough. The runner will try to score. And a oh my goodness, he got in there. Okay, I thought I was a little hesitant because his speed's not great, and I was thinking about maybe I'll put Crosby in, but I want to save Crosby for later. Because his, his speed's a little bit better. If we need a pinch runner later in this game. And I don't want Crosby to... I was... Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. That Terrell injury is so difficult at this point in the season. Another guy contending. He's going to get All-American honors. Again, he was a first-teamer. Or it was, it was definitely close. He was first or second. So he was having a good year. His batting average came up. We were getting RBIs with him. His home runs weren't as much as I would like. But guys, we're taking a 6-5 to five lead. This is crazy. Okay, let's keep it going. Will that drop? All right, Villar. This guy is just eating so much right now. This is what we need from all of our guys. Just getting base hits every time he comes up to bat. The Alex Terrell injury is very difficult to handle right now. Drop in the comments, what should I do? I don't know how long he's going to be out, but drop in the comments if you have coaching decisions you think I should make moving forward because if it's a pulled it's a pulled hamstring, so he's going to be out for at least a little bit. But let me know what I should do. What moves do I make now? I could put Gates. Here's Gates here. He could go to first base. I did that. A little bit so he could play first base. I could keep Gill at first. It's a and go Valdez at third. We're just third. getting hits. Let's keep it. Let's do it for Alex Terrell. Man. Such a crushing the loss for the team. The pulled hamstring, that's what it was with Tyler Page. And, and he was out for a while. For a season in. Okay. He's out of there. Getting thrown out at home too much. I'm trying to extend this lead. Six to five, though. Okay. Get through. We got to send them. We got to send them. Get down. Okay, there we go. See, sometimes we're getting thrown out at home, but sometimes we score and the runs are what we needed. I want to steal. I want to steal third. Okay, we're going. We're going. We got to. Oh, he, I think he bobbled it. There we go. He's in there easily. 
Everybody, let's keep this going. Okay, this is a huge inning. Let's go. Get down. There we go. I don't want to steal second with Del Castillo. This has been a huge inning. Tuero's up again. Or he's up to bat. This is... I put him in as that pinch runner for Terrell to lead off the inning. And Tuero comes up big with a base hit. That's going to be two. Go, 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 go. Okay, get down. He's safe, right? Yeah, he's safe. Man, we are... This is a crazy inning. Up 10 to 5 now. We are doing this for Alex Terrell. Man, I cannot believe he got hurt. We are getting struck hard with these injuries. Jordan Lala with that torn ACL and now Terrell. Two of our best players. We have depth, but it's a huge difference when you're trying to win a national title. Obviously, it looks like we're going to be okay with this game, but it's not about this game. We've got to, and even like the ACC tournament, I'd like to win it. For sure. But it's about when getting the College World Series, getting a national championship. Miami has not won one since 2001. And I know you guys would like to say the Miami Hurricanes are the 2020 national champions. It's going to be official. It's going to be in the record books, guys. I know the season, the real season didn't happen. But if Miami... If Miami, if we win the national title, it's going to go in the record books as the, the official national champions. Because this is absolutely official. Hashtag official champions. Okay. I've got Palmquist in there, but we've got lefties. Okay, I forgot that we got to switch our defensive lineup here. I'm just so excited that we got this big lead. It's a range of emotions with Terrell out. But we got to switch these guys around. And Gil played a little first base his first year at Miami with Terrell kind of struggling. So he has played. That's a good good start for uh, Gil at first base there. That I am getting sick and tired of that play. I'm not trying to throw. That one I was trying to throw a second. Okay. Well, we got a five-run lead, but, man, I am tired of making those kind of mistakes. Foul off the left side. Again, just leaving Palmquist in. We, we've got some outs to go. And I'll, I'll take them out here. If it really gets out of hand, but we're up five, and but we're in the seventh. We still got to get through. We can go. We still have Kaiser, and we can go Federer more innings if we need to. Makes the catch for the first out. Number twenty-two is one for three today with a single. I don't want to risk it anymore. Well, let's get Kaiser in there. Hopefully, we can get a double play and get out of this. Through the Kaiser struggled, uh, struggling early with them, and then he picked it up. Just a reminder, he signed as an undrafted free agent with the Reds, so he's moving on as well. He won't be back. Foul away. Tyler's a guy that, I, and I didn't get a chance to talk to him about this, but last offseason, last summer after the season was over, He really worked on he went he went on uh he really worked on his spin rate. Number thirty four is batting sixth, hitting two seventy eight with two. It was important for him to work on that. Get it evaluated. It's such a big thing in, in with pitching nowadays. Everybody's talking about it. It's such an important thing. All right, Gil. We'll take that out. So yeah, Tyler went to Seattle, Washington for for analytics and a spin rate assessment. 
with driveline baseball. Considered very good with that kind of stuff. This one is crushed to right. There we go, a home run. There we go. Mike Anthony Valdez, that's exactly what we need from him in the sense that I think he's a guy that will – because the way it sets up now, I'm thinking Gill at first, Valdez at third. Two home runs in the and so game. it's great to see that he's playing well here. Home run in the ACC tournament as a freshman in this big game. This is a big game. We win this. We go to the final. Fastball missed low. Hit toward third. Foul off the left side. There, man, Anthony Villar is just racking up hits. I'm thinking about moving him up in the order. I haven't thought about it. Maybe you guys can drop in the comments of what you think maybe the order adjustments should be with Terrell. With Terrell out, but I'm thinking maybe we go Villar up in the order. It's something we were doing earlier in the year. But I liked having... Jenkins, Lala, Zamora as like the top three. That's kind of what we were doing for a while before Lala went down. And then I kind of moved Zamora up to the two spot is how I adjusted there. But maybe Villar, we get him back up there at the beginning. I was just checking Gates' speed. I was making sure. Okay, there we, there we go. Come in to score. Number 51 is on with the single. His first of the game. I was seeing if there was a way we could still second, but I didn't want to risk it with his rating in the 60s there. Okay, that's not what we're trying to do. What a terrible... Oh, my. That's a terrible sequence. I'm trying to go back to second, and the guy from first is going to, to second. Swung through the fastball, down and in. There have been some disaster plays going on in this game. Fastball on the corner. Good pitch there. Up 12 to 5. The way I'm thinking now is I'd like for Kaiser to pitch the rest of the game. We'll save Fetterman for the final. Fastball struck him out. Number 44 is up next. But he's got to get guys out. The, getting guys out is the big thing for me right now. I don't want this thing to just get out of hand. I don't want it to be 12-8 or 12-9 or something silly. Let's go ahead and... Okay, and now we're giving up hits. Okay. But this is great to see the offense. We had we just erupted in that inning. That was crazy to see just because we were... In a tight game, we're down five to three, and then all of a sudden, now we're up twelve to five. There's Toro. That's good speed there. Maybe again, that maybe that's the move to make. Just put him in right field moving forward. Other options would be Jared Thomas in right field. Again, you could go Valdez. Get there, Jenkins. Nice. That's great speed. Get out of that inning. This game has certainly been a grind, but a lot of fun lately with those those runs. However, the expense of Alex Terrell, I still can't get over it. There's certain injuries that I feel would really hurt the team. Zamora, Del Castillo are two of the big ones. The two biggest ones. But the one with Terrell is definitely crushing. The junior steals himself another base. He's got really high power ratings. A threat to hit a home run every time up to bat. It's particularly against right-handed pitching. Foul. And you need those that threat in the postseason. Oh, that's tough. I, I thought that was going to be a ball. That was that was just a really now good pitch. I don't know if they back. called me the right out on the swing or it was a strike. But no there we go. Base hit. And seven RBIs. Second baseman knocks it down. Where are we? Is it 13 to 5? A run score. All of a sudden, okay, if we score two runs, we can end this game with a run roll. The runner's going. The so I, I, I'd, I'd like steal. to be able to do that. I can't believe this is a potential for us, considering how the game was going. I was not even expecting right. this. And 
That's two or one. Oh, I've got to go. I got to go second to third on that play. All right, Rivera. He had that game-ending home run last time. Fouled out of play down the right field side. Home run, I'll do it again here. Oh, the changeup. I was way out in front, but throw that again. Let's do that again. Throw that again. I want to see that changeup right over the middle of the plate. Oh. Oh, he did it again, but I couldn't do anything with it. Okay, that's okay. We'll go to the ninth. We'll close out the game. We'll keep Kaiser on the mound. I was really hoping to get one of those game ending run roll home runs. Let's get this guy out. Let's send this guy home. I hope this guy's a senior. I don't want to face him next year. This all red. We haven't seen that much this year. There's really nowhere to pitch him. So whenever that happens, I'm trying to throw it down. Try to go off speed. Depending on what kind of pitch it is for him. If it's a good pitch for the pitcher, I'll do it. Otherwise, I'll just go ahead and throw it fastball. I want to keep it down. Guys, that was a fast inning. Tyler Kaiser. That's what I'm talking about. That's what you need from everybody. A huge win for the squad. A lot of guys stepped up. Alex Trog goes down Hurricane. with the injury. We're going to find out how hurt he is. They always show you a quick update right after the game. So we're going to see. Really Stay with me here. Game, we we're going to see here. Very evenly matched, but we're end, going to the championship really game of the ACC tournament. tournament. I don't know who we're going to face. But it's going to be a one-game championship That's final. Palmquist with that win. And we're going to find out right here the severity of it. Hopefully it's not big. Hopefully he's okay. We've got to get him back for the NCAA tournament. Definitely for the College World Series. Pulled hamstring will be out for the rest of the season. That is terrible news. I did, oh my. That's the worst case possible. Tyler Page is coming back. Okay, well... So we got to make him act. Okay, Terrell, it says, okay, this is interesting. It says out one to two weeks. I don't know what to make of that. This is the ACC championship game. Hello, I want to talk about the Alex Terrell injury, but first off, I'm excited about this. Shout out to you guys. If you're still here, you want to see Miami. If you hit that like button, if you want to see Miami win the championship game, of the ACC tournament. We're going with Slate Sacconi. I was saving him for the final. I went with McFarland in game three. I jumped, Sacone, I jumped McFarland over Sacconi because I wanted to save him for this one. So we'll go Sacconi. The way I'm looking at it too. Based on how things map out, we got Brian Van Bell available in the bullpen. North Carolina's got a good team. Ranked 19th in the country. Their top three hitters are really good. And if you're a little confused with the first few games about the rosters, this is the real North Carolina roster. This is the real squad here. These guys are good. So Aaron Sabato's in there. First round draft pick. We've already played these guys during the regular season. Dylan Harris is a good player. We've got to get this guy out to start. And that's, that's what he does. He's a good player. Let's try to cut him off at second. He's on with a single. Number two is Yeah, look at that top piece. three. Grants is a freshman eight. catcher. He's potential freshman of the year. And Sabato with the 17 home runs. That leads the ACC. So their top three hitters are really good. Breaking ball caught the inside corner. I didn't get a chance of the rest of the lineup, but definitely their top three hitters. I have got a lock in. And you saw it already, the leadoff hit for Harris. Whiffed on the heater. And Grants, again, a guy that's that's potentially the ACC freshman of the year. We're trying to sneak in there with Alex McFarlane. He's had a really good year as well. Low ERA. Oh, too much drop on that breaking ball. It's down He's getting ball. some wins. He didn't get, I was a little disappointed because he started last game and that's the whole point. Tried to get him some wins, pitch well, gave up some runs. ERA goes up a little bit, I'm sure. And didn't get the win. All right, Slade, Slide that's what we in. need out of him. Number 19 is digging in. Here's Sabato again. This guy has 99 power. And I remember, if you guys remember the first time we played North Carolina, this the series, we just could not get him out. He was hitting, he was crushing balls all over the field. That's a crushing, okay. He's just really good. We're going to have our hands full with these top three hitters for sure. 
The sophomore is aboard. So we get a the double top. there. Runners on second and third. This is big because this is again one game. This isn't best of three for the final here. This is we're both here. One game in the championship game. Shout out to you guys for showing your support. I'm glad you guys are here for this one. This is what you've been waiting for. It's what you were hoping for. You'd hoping I'd get to the championship game of the ACC tournament. In the first three games of the ACT tournament, we were playing this the games during the day, but this is the championship game, so you know we got to go night game with this one. One thing I just noticed, guys, Slate Sakoni, his stamina is already at... Look at that. He's already at 89%. We're only in the first inning. He's already d lost 11% of his stamina. Okay. Here's the long throw. He's on with a single. Great job ahead. The sophomore has it. So Zarate gets the hit to put him up 1-0. This is not good. We got to get out of this jam. Runners on first and third. Earl Semper's up to bat. We got to get him out. I like that little pocket with his hot zones. I'd like to touch the corners, but because it's in the middle, the way it works is it's pretty easy to throw down the middle. On this game with, with the way the bars work. So if I just stay in that middle zone, I'll be okay. I'm trying to, instead of going left, right, in and out of the zone, I'm going to try to go up and down a little bit more with Semper. Oh, there we go, Fraser Moore. Huge jumping catch. We have not been able to do that nearly enough this year, but we get it there. Okay, that's how we get out of jump. We give up a run, so we're down 1-0 in the championship game. And that's okay. This is going to be a tough game for the sure. They're going with Lancelotti. A, a lot of walks. A circle change, a curve, a slide 43 piece, walks in 84 sinker. innings. Strikeouts are pretty good. So yeah, he's a pretty good pitcher. Here's our lineup. This is what we're doing. I move Villarda to the two hole. Again, I go Gill at first base, Valdez at third. Making the adjustment with Alex Terrell out for the season, it looks like. That's what it said on the announcement. You guys saw it. I'm a little confused because it says out one to two weeks. That's, that being said, I don't know what the schedule is. Maybe it is out for the season. I'm going to hold out hope that it's not. Especially if it's only one week because I'm looking at it like we wrapped this up. Then we got the NCAA tournament with regional play. Tony Jenkins. Tony Jenkins leadoff home run. He has had a, I think he's had a hit every single game to lead off the, the game in the ACC tournament, and so to get a home run in the final, that's even better. Well, he gets enough of this one. It looks we get that like run back immediately. Back. We're not playing from it's behind too much. Just kept going. Carries it out for a big home run. Pressure can mount when you're playing from behind as the game goes on. So we get that leadoff home run, and Jenkins had that really hot stretch, that 10-game stretch, and then he he's really kind of slowed down with his home run total. Still hitting over 400, still getting stolen bases, doubles, leads the team in doubles. The Tar Heels has a well which is great. Yeah, their their team's pretty good. Okay, yeah, Villar at the two hole. He's piled up like seven, eight hits or something the first in this ACC tournament. Just getting a ton of hits. I want to see real quick where that ball was. If I'm chasing pitches out of the zone. But yeah, drop in the comments. Let me know what what you think I should do with Terrell. How do how do we adjust with Terrell out? And you know, you guys know it's a crushing loss because 2019 for the Hurricanes. Oh, we're going two on this silly thing. Bouncing on that bag. There we go. We're getting two. And I want to steal third, putting the pressure on these guys. With one out, that means I can go Del Castillo, sack fly. So we got to get the third. There we go. Nobody's getting picked off. We're not throwing the ball to the wrong base. This game. Drop. There we go. Base hit. Del Castillo. That's what we need. That's how you step up for Alex Terrell. The Terrell. Second most home runs in a season in 2019. In Miami history. So you know it's a big loss. We're trying to break that up. That was a good turn on that double play. We're trying to break that up. Hopefully everything's okay. Del Castillo's not hurt. Oh, he jumped right over him. Good play by their shortstop. No collision at all. 
Patrick Alvarez is another guy to watch for North Carolina. Okay, two to one lead. There we go. We got that in the second inning. Again, making that adjustment for Alex Terrell out. So with the College World Series, yeah, one to two weeks. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe he's going to be able to be back healthy. That would be great. But until then, we'll operate like it. he is out for the season. And if it returns, then he returns. And I'm okay with, and the thing is, he was a good defender at first base. And he prevented a lot of errors. He scooped a lot of balls for us. I feel like he was pretty good on getting grounders. That's what I'm talking about. That's how roll to his right, but I, I'm I'm trying to get back into the play. I'm not trying to throw to the wrong base again. Good play by Villar. Okay, here we go. Bottom of a second. Let's let's keep it going. Let's go. Everybody needs some hits. Okay, I'm a little too jacked up right now. This is the ACC championship game. Gabe Rivera, come on. A heater down low for a ball. Okay, I'm. We're taking pitches. We'll take walks. Anything we got to do. I wish some guys would take some pitches in the arm, in the chest. Some hit by pitches. I wish there was more of them. We need all everybody to take a base if they can. Okay, that that didn't go well. We we gave we took some pitches in that bat. So there's that. It's not something I try to do too often. I don't know how much it makes a difference. Basically, I'm trying to hit pitches. If I see strikes, I'm swinging the ball. I don't want to get in six pitches into the at-bat. You guys watching me take a bunch of pitches. But you don't want to see me swinging at pitches like that either. I like Valdez at third. I think this is the best move to make for the squad. Other options would be Gates at first, leave Gill at third. You could go DH with another bat. If you don't like Valdez, Tuero in there, the other options would be Jared Thomas, Isaac Quinones, he's a right-handed bat. Most of our guys are lefties. Chad Crosby's a lefty. He's actually been hitting the ball pretty well for us. We bring Tyler Page back off injury, but he's not a guy that I figure into the mix. However, I like him as a defensive replacement. That's going to be good to have. Especially with the team, with Gill, who's not a great defender. If I want to make that move, regardless of where he is, I can move Page around as a second baseman, shortstop, or third baseman. But if Villar and Zamora are healthy, Page only figures in at third base. Fly ball hit a ton. Oh my goodness, give up a home run. Yeah. Eric with the home run. He's building his freshman conference player of the year resume. He doesn't get all of it, but he got enough of it. Short porch to right, just rides it out for a home run. Grants with the home run. So I think he's got 11 on the season. Really good year for a catcher. Freshman catcher. He's definitely going to be a player to watch moving forward. Okay, now Sabato's coming up. I want to see where I pitched him last time. So I go fastball up. Gave up a base hit. I'm trying to use this a little bit more. Pay attention to it. It's a little hard to see, but you guys can see it there. So I threw a... It's just sometimes good to, to look at the... Okay. I want to look at pitch sequences and also what they had success against. Try to not re repeat that. I want to try to pay attention to that, particularly with those top three hitters, as a reminder of what I threw. But it obviously didn't matter with Zapata there, so... We're going to have our hands full this game if we can't get those top three guys out. If they consistently get big hits, home runs, base hits, doubles, those kind of things. If they continually get on base. Okay, there we go. Okay, I know it looks sloppy. I wasn't. I said I wasn't going to throw it to the wrong base. But hey, we'll take that 3-5-1 put out there. 
ground out 3-5-1. If you guys are scoring at home, I know that nobody is, but I like saying that. You guys hear it all the time on the radio if you're scoring at home. The thing is, whenever they say that, I used to be that guy who would score at home. I used to listen to baseball games and keep stats on it when I was young. I have my scorebook. And, and the thing is, over the years as a, as a reporter covering baseball, whether it's Miami here or the Marlins, being around the game, one of the things you learn with other reporters, it doesn't matter where you grew up or when you end up meeting, everybody seems to have those kind of stories some kind of weird stat story or something with sports early on or something they used to do something that uh it's kind of funny to laugh at back then now looking back but basically some of us you know i was one i had no idea i would end up doing this for a career and i'm talking about being a reporter not a playing with the Miami Hurricanes in video games. But um, I've definitely enjoyed it. And I will talk more about that at some point, about how this thing all started. Giving you guys seasons and things like that. But, uh, yeah, statistics, writing down things, keeping stats, playing with baseball cards, looking at stuff, playing baseball, or playing board games with baseball cards, all those kind of things. Definitely stuff that I enjoyed doing as a kid. And... Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I, I still enjoy those kind of things now. Not I don't do it nearly as often, but it's still kind of just interesting side. to look at stuff and, and think back on things. But not only with baseball, and maybe I'm bringing it up because maybe some of you guys have done that too. If you're a baseball fan in general, there's something. Maybe you guys did score games at home. Maybe you still do. I remember going to games as a fan and uh, keeping score. And it for me. Now it's different. If I go to a baseball game as a fan, and I don't get to do it very often where I'm not working a game, it's a little bit of a mix. First, I love being able to not pay attention to all those kind of things that are going on and just taking the game, taking the atmosphere. You're not glued to every pitch. You kind of, you know, you're kind of enjoying the people that you're with, enjoying the, the atmosphere, the scenery, usually the snacks. And things like that. So, it, and then there's that. But then on the, on the flip side, sometimes I do want to know, you know, what what is how you know, wish I was a little bit more dialed in or uh, to the game too. So it's a little bit of a mix. But generally, when I when I go as a fan, I definitely just enjoy taking the game for what it is. But yeah, just kind of curious to what you guys do, or maybe just if you want to drop in the comments how you guys, how much you guys love the game. And if you're watching this, you're definitely. You're definitely a baseball fan for sure. Pickoff play. Either you played, just been a fan of the game, or both. Hit toward third. The throw across the infield. That's in oh, not even the close. Play. Great I think it's because he went back to third just for that split second. But man, I've I got to get that play to work out a little bit more. The runner's going. And throw I'm being super aggressive. Still, ACC championship game. We're down three to two. Get through. There we go. Okay. That baby was crushed back up the middle. And a run will come in to score. That's good. That's tight again. I don't like playing from behind. I'm okay if I have to. I like to get the game even as quickly as possible. And the way I watch games too, on big games, either playoff games or situations, typically when you're watching them, you understand the game can go either way. Leads and, and deficits and things like that but when it's like a, a one game situation or a playoff situation you're always wanting to be you always want the score either tied or the lead you don't want to be behind like ever that's how i watch it even though you know it's just different than regular season play and you understand the nature of games and you got to come back but that's kind of how i feel about this one i i always i want to draw this even or get the lead that's a Got tough a pitch. That that's a, that's running screen. in on my hands really quick. Yeah, that's a that's a strike, but that's tough. Three and two. A ground ball headed for the hole. Over to first. He's out. Man, that's coming in pretty good. Miami that off speed, that that pitch third. that he's throwing there. The the 
Number two is going to okay. lead off this inning. This is a tough game. Three, three through three. Homers and 18 runs batted in. It's been a little bit difficult for Slade here. Yeah, they're just getting base hit. It's a little surprising because he's been pretty effective. This is reminding me of some of his starts earlier in the year where they would get hits, his ERA would climb a little bit. Okay, we got to turn two here. If we can, turn it. Oh, just a little late. All right, now that's top of the order. Dylan Harris is up. I talked about stamina earlier. And Slade's already down to 69. Again, I'm looking at what I've thrown him before, what he's had success with. Try to stay away from that. If I can, while trying to look at hot and cold zones, stay out of that hot zone boxes as well. Oh my goodness. No! Man, Dylan Harris, all three of their top three hitters in the Number lineup have been hurting me this game. Harris with the home run. Grants had one earlier. Sabato's got is getting hits. I've got to make this move with Van Bell and get him ready. I it's not what I'd like. I don't want to go to the bullpen early. And it's it's a little bit different because he's a starting pitcher, but he is ready and he is healthy and he can handle this. There's, there's been enough days since he last started the ACC, the first game of the ACC tournament, so he's fine. Through a heater at the knees. Just from a personal perspective, I would hate to take Slade out before five innings, but we don't have that option. I can't worry about those kind of things. The only thing I can worry about is getting this win, and I don't like that they're not only the runs. Man, that's a hard hit ball. Not just the runs, but they're piling up hits. And his stamina is going down. He's at 64%. It seems like it's going down really quickly. And we just have to be cognizant of that. And with Van Bell too, it might take him, because he's a starting pitcher, doesn't come out of the bullpen. It might take him a little bit longer to warm up. Some games are like that. This one might be one of them. I don't do this very often, so I don't Swung quite I haven't been paying attention to it, but I definitely just want to get him started. So he's ready to go. As quickly as possible. I'm trying to get him to chase on this. It'd be great to get out of this inning. We've got two outs. I don't want to prolong this inning longer than I have to here. Oh, he's not chasing. Those are good pitches, and he's not chasing. I'm hoping for this strikeout. It's that risk I'm taking with throwing balls because his stamina just keeps going down. Can we get there? Okay, we got we got to get him out here. Okay, that's going to work. Okay, we're through four. And what I might do, too, we'll just, just kind of have to see. If Van Bell's not ready, I can always... And if it does take longer for a starter to get ready, I can always warm up another guy. You've got two options in the bullpen. Two guys can warm up at a time. So maybe I get a, a, a typical reliever ready just in case we've got to go to the bullpen. It's just an option. I, I would like to think Van Bell will be ready by next inning if we need to go to him. Nobody on base and one gone. Fly ball toward right. The right fielder moving under it now. And the right fielder is there. The freshman All right, down five to three. Valdez had a home run already in the tournament. Okay, there we go. I want to get two. Go two. Got a slide. Got a slide, though. Okay, good. Nice. I was close. Not Doesn't have great speed, but he slid in there safely. ACC championship game. Everybody needs to slide in. Do whatever they got to do to get the base. Here we go. Okay, J.P. Gates needs a base hit here. Man, we are always trailing in this game. I know it was 1-0. We tied it. We are down 3-2. Now 5-3. I can't remember. Okay, there we go. 
one had eyes. The runner will try to score. Nice. Here's the throw. Number you know, Tony Jenkins has made those nice two. throws at center field. That one was a little bit late by their guy. But it reminds me of, I remember going to a Pirates game. In Pittsburgh, it was it was when Miami played up there. I covered a game. The football team played up there. And I went to, okay. And I have family in the area and things like that. So I went to a Pirates game. It was before McCutcheon was really a big name at the time. He was a prospect. Uh, I would say a prospect. But a guy that was playing it, a guy that you thought had a really good chance to be a really good player. But it was before his MVP year, before he really broke out. But anyways, you knew about him. And the Pirates weren't very good at that time. And I remember... I'll never forget it because it was so ridiculous. So he gets a, he gets a, he's trying to throw a guy out at home, whether it was from a, a, a fly ball or a base hit. I can't remember. Yeah, and I'm going Van Bell, guys. I, I don't want to risk it. We're just gonna go ahead and make this move. And the, I want to talk about McCutcheon in a second, but I, the way I'm thinking about it here is, we'll go Van Bell. And it's top of the fifth. And I would like for him to finish the game. He's got enough in, in the tank where he can handle five innings. So I'd like for him to pitch the night all the rest of the game here. Is the way I'm looking at it. But obviously I could go Fetterman if he struggles. I don't know what we do, honestly. I mean, we could go Palmquist, Kaiser as options. But I don't, I don't, oh, okay. Giving up hits there. Oh, man, it got right by Rivera, so that's going to be a double. But anyways, McCutcheon got the ball in center field. And I always think about it because you don't see it very often. But, man, he sailed that ball. It hit, like, the backstop, like, high up on the on the fence, like, way past the catcher, just airmailed that thing. And uh, it was just really funny to see. And obviously, the guy was safe and stuff, but it was just a one, just... <laughs> A ball that got away from him for punt. sure. It was just a funny a play. Back to the screen. And, uh, you know, and from my perspective, obviously Pirates fans probably wouldn't have thought it was too funny, but I was just there to watch a, a game. Comes up throwing and just sails that thing in the air, just drills the backstop. Okay, so that's big news for them. Zerati's a nice player for them. So he goes down with the injury. But they got that 6-4 lead. Van Bell has been so good. We just got to be make solid throws there. And I know I could try to go to second, but I don't. There's a chance that he could be safe, and I'm just trying to get the out there. But Van Bell has been so good. I didn't expect him to come in and immediately give up a run. And they got another runner in scoring position. Change up is over for a strike. It just it just feels like I cannot allow any more runs here. Gotta get this strike out. There That's we go. The third out. Okay, we gave up a run. Basketball Disappointed in that. North Carolina leaves a man on second. But I think it was a good move to put Van Bell in. The junior will come to the plate. We just gotta get him in a groove. There's a ground ball. And hopefully the shut these guys down. But we the first. big thing now. He's We're down two there. runs. We've got to get the Number bats going. Is in. Slices foul. Hit to the left side of the infield. Throw to first and the out. All right, Freddie. The junior comes this is what we need from our national player of the year. Candidate, get a base. Oh, my Makes goodness. The play to end the inning. I needed him to get it going. We got to get one run at a time. Gets a strike with the fastball at the knees. Fastball. But the big thing is we've got to we got to start putting up zeros when they're up to bat. We can't let them get one run at a time. And stretch the lead makes it very difficult for us. We, we only have a few innings left in this game. I really want to win the ACC championship game here. There's a lazy fly to right field. The field It'd be great momentum going to the NCAA tournament. But obviously, it would just be a disappointment. It wouldn't crush our season. 
we, it wouldn't take away from anything we've already been able to do. It would just be nice to win that 2020, the official ACC 2020 baseball tournament. Do you think that if we win this, I can contact the ACC and they'll send the trophy here? Because you know they made a trophy, the 2020 baseball tournament. And that since this is a, since this is the official tournament, we've already recognized it as the official tournament. I think they should send the trophy, and they don't even you, if they don't want UM to proudly display it in their trophy case. Number 44 is up next. With all the rest of the trophies they have, they can certainly send it here, and I will Fast certainly display inside. it. If they want to send, if we win right. this, I should contact the ACC and let them know we won the official Five ACC Brady. tournament. Go ahead. Here's my mailing address, and you can send the trophy here. Two balls, and I'll no and I can even tell them I'll uh, I'll take a picture of it, Over to first. And, and we could do a That's video a showcasing the, the nice trophy. The logo, the 2020 Nobody ACC baseball base. tournament. I like that. And then we just keep it moving. If we win the NCAA tournament, we contact the College World Series. The junior is on with a ask them to send us some first, some gear, some some trophy. Away. First things first, though, we've got to get this this win. We don't want the ACC to send us honorable mention or runner-up trophy, or a ribbon or a plaque. Maybe, although. I'm not going to lie. If they sent in... Okay. That's exactly what we need. Okay, we there we go. We tied the game up at six. We're back in as Gabe Rivera's coming up with some big home runs in the ACC tournament. That's what we need from him. Again, he's been hot and cold all season. When he's hot, he's really good. When he's cold, he's just kind of okay, and, it, and, and it's noticeable. It's to the point when he gets cold like this, or he's hot now, but when he gets cold, it's almost like, man, do we even... Can we even put him in the lineup? But he has been heating up at the right moment, at the right time, and we get this home run. Maybe this is what I needed. The squad knows I was thinking about the ACC tournament championship. They know I was thinking about getting a trophy, and maybe that's why they decided to get it going. Okay, Valdez. Back-to-back -back jacks. That's what we needed. Seven to six lead. I like that. Let's make it three in a row. Okay, I don't want to get greedy. Let's just say... Just acknowledge this home run by Valdez coming up home, huge in the ACC tournament. Freshman in his first ACC tournament. He's come up with two home runs. Number 10 is one coming up in a big Davis spot. All right, JP Gates, can you deliver as well? Okay, that's not it, but that's okay. 7-6 to six lead. The bottom is 6. Let's see if there's a way we can just scratch across some runs. Those home runs by Rivera and Valdez were huge. They're two guys that I need to provide some power in the postseason with Terrell out. Those two guys have been pretty productive. Okay, okay, Gates. Um, oh my goodness, he hits it that well. I would have loved the result of a double right there. But still good to see. The solid contact is good to see. That's solid contact right there. Base hit. He's on with a single. I want to try to steal second. He doesn't have great speed, but good enough to get a steal. If I can go, I'm thinking if I can go steal here, if I can go base hit, score, make it 8-6. That's what I'm hoping here. Jenkins is having a good year. We got to keep this thing going, guys. Okay, come on. Get down. He's in there. Okay, there we go. Oh my goodness, he threw that changeup. We just got out in front of it. Couldn't attack on a run, but obviously, huge inning for the squad. A couple of home runs. We take a 7 to 6 lead through 6. Okay, Sabato's up. We got to get him out. This is what we need. This is exactly the spot that we wanted to be in. If you think about it, we have a one run lead. Best pitcher on the mound. Only needs nine more outs, and we'll win the championship. Ground ball to third. Throw to first. Okay, only eight on more outs. For the out. Number thirty-one is digging in. All right, Van Bell. There we go. To short. Over to He's first. settling in. That, maybe he, in maybe he wasn't used Number to coming out of the bullpen. It took him a little bit to get into a groove. 
But this, he is settling in now. That was a huge inning for the, for him. That's what, that's what you need after you score some runs, gain the lead, to get that shutdown inning from the pitcher. All right, Villar. He's been raking in the ACC tournament. That was not a good swing. Now. Ball is it's not not a huge deal, and I like it. But man, that traffic—they got traffic on that bridge like all game long. I've been noticing it. It's not a huge deal, but you know, it's not. I'm still hitting. It's not. I'm focusing on the pitch, but it's just kind of interesting that they're just flying by in that hitter's eye right there. Oh. I didn't know he was going to throw it in the dirt. Okay, 3-2. Let's go. Yep, we'll take a walk. There we go. Anthony Villar is... Okay, they're just making a move there. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. They got a new pitcher. And let's, let's, we got a hit. Everybody hits off him. Let's go. Left-handed pitcher. The junior is aboard but I like our right-handed bats. His second of the game. Some more there. Del Casillo, if they pitch away, I can slap this to left field. But they're just doing an intentional walk there. That's okay. Raymond Gill. Man, I really want a grand slam here. No outs. Yeah, I wanted a little too much. And we get and that pop out. Play. Man. Okay. All right, Gabe. Number Got one home run, but you can get another. Three today with a home run. Oh. Breaking ball in tight for a ball. Oh. That's a ball. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Bases little one out, two out count. Okay. I'm. I want to go power swing on this. I typically don't ever do power swing. But man. I think that was in the. I don't know. That was close. If that was a strike or not. Okay, come on. Yeah, it was close. That's okay. That'll be a sack fly. There we go. All right, eight six lead. Here's the steal. Throw to third. Oh, that was close. I got a little bit of a bad jump, but the throw was off, so that worked out. Base hit. There we go. That's going to score a run. 9-6. to six. Okay, there we go, Valdez. I don't know if they have it, but he's definitely he definitely should make all the all-ACC tournament team. All right, Gates. I'm going to have to sit him. Uh, yeah, I want to... I don't know. I was thinking about sitting him because it's a lefty-lefty matchup. Oh, and it worked out. That's what I was trying to do. I was hoping he would throw that pitch. I was guessing on that. I was hoping he would throw. He would go away. And I'd be able to line it up right. So that was good. Nice double by Gates. I was thinking about taking him out for a right-handed hitter. But I want to keep Gates in there as much as possible. And plus, as the postseason goes along, I don't want to, you know, he's going to need to be in there against right left-handed pitchers, assuming he stays in the starting lineup like we'd like him to do. I don't want to start making the decision for JP what we're going to do with him until the NCAA, okay, until the NCAA tournament because ever since he complained about his playing time and transferring, I was okay with starting him. And essentially, it's not that the, these games don't matter, but I, I was okay with him being in there. And now with the NCAA tournament, everything really coming down to a season, I just want to make sure I'm making smart decisions. And if he ends up transferring, then that's on him. If we take him out of the lineup. Oh, that's going to drop. There we go. That's going to score two. Oh, my goodness. Tuero is coming up huge. That's what we needed. Out of him. 
12 to 6. All of a sudden, it's 12 to 6. I don't know what happened. We were trailing, and now everybody's hitting. Oh, I don't know what the right fielder is doing, but we're scoring another run. Definitely got to go three. If he's going to do something like that, we're going to use our speed and get all the way to third for a triple. That's good to see. We're chasing left-handed pitcher there. But yeah, basically, like, and that's another thing. You drop in the comments when we're trying to decide what to do with Terrell. You know, Gates doesn't have to be in there at DH. If you guys would like to see me move off that as well, don't feel like he's locked in as we move forward with our lineup situation. And this is all of a sudden a route. I feel really, I mean, we got a big lead. There's no reason we should give it up. Let's go ahead and cruise these next couple innings. Get out of here with that ACC championship. Swing and a miss. Need to cook up some emails to see if we can get that trophy sent to the to the to South Florida. It's a shallow left. He's on with a single. This is good. A lot of guys stepped up. And one of the things that, that I'm really happy about, and it's kind of happened all year, but even when things don't look good, at one point in the game, I just have to stay with it. And I don't know if their pitcher just got tired eventually or eventually just started to put together hits. Guys seeing them more, that kind of thing. Number oh, a huge two. day for Zamora. Three doubles and three stolen bases. National player of the year. He's got to get this award. Oh. And just ball. like we're about to win this ACC tournament that did not happen, Freddie Zamora has a chance to be national player of the year in a season that he would not have played in. He did not play this year with the injury, so this is great to Number see him. Grab an award he would not have gotten. And yeah, we're not letting up on these guys. Hit toward short. Over to first. He's out. And at this point, I'm not really thinking about it too much, but it is, you know, three more runs. We can end this game right now. But either way, winning the ACC tournament's a big deal. You know what? And it's it's big because Miami hasn't even done this very often. Even as good of teams that they've had. It's a diving grab. Throw to first, two gone. That's a wrong Miami. They don't have a bunch of ACC tournament championships. Change up for a ball down low. All right, Rivera, let's just keep this going. Stay hot. And this might be an opportunity to get some subs in, but I, I feel like I feel like they'll be okay that they don't get the ACC tournament experience. And I feel like they'll be okay because I gave them all their starts at the end of the year. The reserves got in there. A foul ball. Man, every time I think about the reserves, I think about next year because I'm a little curious just to see how all this is going to work. Just to see how many guys we're going to have to replace. For the real team, they don't have to replace too much. For us, it could be everybody. It's a shallow right. He's going for two. I'm curious. I'm a, I'm a, I know you guys love this squad and you're happy about all these guys, but I do wonder, are you guys going to tune out in 2021 if I have all kinds of new players? All the stars are gone and moved on, and I'm grinding out games. I'm not worried about it, though. We're going to finish strong in recruiting. We're going to get this one. Okay, we only need one more run. All right, J.P. Gates. A dangerous pitch, a hanging breaking ball. The Hurricanes are making two runs home, two out, a runner at first. The runner goes. There we go. I'm trying to, 
I know it seems crazy, but I'm just trying to get this game over with. I want to get this chance. I want to hoist the trophy. If we get one more run, we'll get that 10 run roll. I had no idea what was going to happen. Runner goes. There we go. That's going to do it. The runner will try to score. That's going to do it. Miami's only won one other ACC tournament championship in 2008. Shout out to the 2008 squad. One of the most, absolutely the most fun baseball team I've covered. But the 2020 Miami Hurricanes are so exciting and we won that ACC championship. Shout out to all you guys for all your support for sticking with the ACC tournament. You're diehard fans. We did it. We're moving on to the NCAA tournament. The team to beat are the Miami Hurricanes. We should be the number one national seed. We're the favorites to win the national title. We're going to be just fine without Alex Terrell. It's disappointing he's not playing. It's disappointing him and Jordan Lala are hurt. But we are going to be just fine. And I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.